Now Dia is open. We've installed it in our Windows machine. I'm going to come ahead and double click on the top part here to pull it up to more than a full screen. Now we want to start talking about how to do a flowchart. Okay. This is pretty much the same as you would see in video. All of your little icons are over here under flowchart. You have a different types of other sheets that are available. You can do civil. You can do just ladders. You can do buildings. You can do maps. But for the moment, let's stick with flowchart. Okay. So we want to, of course, start our flowchart with our start and stop. Okay. Terminal interrupt or start or however you want to do it. Okay. So if you hold your mouse pointer over each type, you can go ahead and get your, you can see what's going on here. Okay. So depending on what your flowchart needs to include, okay, we can start our terminal areas. We can start our auxiliary operations, terminal interrupts. Okay, I have a tendency to come over here and just click that. So what we're going to do is you're going to drag, you're going to click on it, and you'll drag it over. Okay, once you have it highlighted in the blue areas, we can drag and drop around. You can make it bigger or smaller, and you can type into the center of it. Okay, you click off of it. You can click back on it if you want. Okay, you right-click on it. You can change its properties, you can change its color, you can change its width. Okay, we can change the line style and a whole bunch of stuff like that. You can change text color if you wanted to. You could go to red, click apply. Okay, and you can do that. Now, the one thing that you do need to be aware of is once you put your text into it, Okay, it does become a little bit of a problem to change it, so I strongly suggest you really don't do that. Try to put your, okay, try to um, put whatever you wanted in it to start with. Okay, to just delete it out, click on it, and you can just click your delete key. So again, we'll put this in here. Okay, we'll click on it, we'll drag it over, and we'll just put start in there. Okay, now... Then what you do is you come down, I'm just gonna put start, okay? Then you're gonna to come to your next part of the process. Okay, let's say we have a process or an auxiliary operation, or in this case, I want a manual operation, okay? So because in our diagram, we're probably gonna to wanna to open an envelope, okay? So get mail, get paper mail, Okay, then you're going to come off of that. You're going to come to your next diagram. Okay, and again, just come down here. Okay, we're going to make it big enough. Okay, and again, try to size all these things properly. I'll show you about that in a minute. You can say open, open all. Okay, then you're going to do a, you're probably going to want to do a number. Okay, because we want to keep track of paper that comes into any office. You're going to come down here and do a number. Okay, now because I already lost that, um, we have a text issue. So I'm going to just delete that one out because, again, you want to put your text in. And I'll show you how to do that if you don't want to put your text in right there. Okay, but number document because we a lot of times want to add a document number for tracking purposes. Okay, if I click off of that and back on, I can make that smaller if I need to. Okay, or I can come up here and I can say left and okay, so now, again, we haven't put any of our lines in, so this is where it becomes interesting, okay? So now what I want to do is I want to put my connectors in, okay? Because that becomes important after a while. I want to put my connectors in. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on the first one, okay? And I'm going to come off of there, and I'm going to put my connectors in. Okay, I'll get rid of that or... That offend that bad one then there. So again, anytime you do that, so now I'm going to come down here. Okay, I'm going to once again um, click up on line. I'm going to click on this first one, 
and I'm going to connect it. You see how it turned from a red up there to a red down there? Okay, that puts your order in. So again, you can do the same thing there. You can click on this first one, connect the second one, and now my connector's in. Now, if you want to do a decision point, again, your little decision symbol, you can drag it down there. Okay, we can say is... Uh, let's pull this up a little bit so we have something to work with. Actually, somehow we got two there. So we'll just say is document readable. And anytime you want to go to a next line without doing a true return, you can just hit your shift and your return key in and we'll let you do that. So, okay, so I'm going to come in there, get rid of that one. Now, see that's out of location there, but it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to put my line in. Okay, because as soon as I pull it back over, it's going to do that. Now, let's say you want to center everything, okay, so you can zoom out. Okay, so let's say if I want to go to 75% so or even lower so I can see it all on one, okay, which is what I'm going to do here, you can highlight the whole thing and you can say tools, okay, um, objects, align, center. Okay, so if I come down here, tools, align, center. You see how I'd lined them all up? And then I can go back and I can do my magnification to get back to them if I need to. Okay, make it bigger or smaller with the magnifying glass. Okay, so again, we have our start. This one didn't quite line up right, so we're going to just make sure that that is in there so we get that. Okay, again, you have to have them turn red to get it in line so you can, now it knows where it's supposed to be. You can do branches, okay, pretty much the same way. We have an is document readable choice down here. Again, this is the decision point that has to be made, okay? If document is not readable, what are we going to do with it? Okay, we're going to do something with it. So let's go ahead and take off that to that side. Okay, that's going to be a manual operation. You can copy to... You can check for damage. Okay, copy onto new paper or whatever you want to do there. Okay, and then you could also, is document readable? Okay, then we're going to basically batch for scanning. Okay, because of course that's one of the first things we have to do. Now, I'm not going to go too much further on this because I really don't want to do your entire project for you. But I did want to show you a little bit how to use Visio, okay, and or how to use Dia. Now, again, you can come up here if you highlight something there, and you can do a tools, and you can edit text, okay, to get back into the text editing. F2 will let you do the same thing. So let's just put in my two last objects here, just so that I do that, because I hate leaving things undone. It drives me nuts. Now, again, you know from any decision point, you have to have a yes, no, so you might as well go ahead and label. Might be a good idea to label yes and no, right? Okay, so we're going to do a yes. Okay, well, we lost my text there. Okay, so I can write the word yes, and I can bring it down, and I can stick it right on there. Okay, who knows? Your instructor may want you to have a little bit bigger print. You can come down here. You can say no. Well, maybe. Okay. Um, text is sometimes interesting to work with because if you don't get it big enough, um, it doesn't it doesn't work all that great. So let's go ahead and click on that. Delete that. We'll come back up here. Just grab another one. Okay. Okay, for some reason that isn't taking. Okay, there we go. And we'll just drag that down there. 
Okay, sometimes when I'm recording, key presses don't all work that great. Now, when you're ready to print this, when you're ready to um, export it, what we want to do is we definitely want to do a page setup. Okay, you're going to want to scale it. You're going to want to like fit it down to one by one. Okay, um, we might want to do different orientations on it. We'll definitely want to change the paper size to letter. Okay, and we're going to want to apply. Okay, now again, we might not be in the right page. Okay, we're at zero. So then if I want to do print, okay, I should be able to print it. Okay, I should be able to preview it. Or a lot of times I can export it as well. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and, eh, let's go ahead and we'll take it to a file. Okay, I'll just name it output test. Because say going to a Microsoft PDF file is sometimes really, really nice. And then we'll go ahead and find the file I just saved, depending on where I put it. Okay, output test is right there. And your document will show up there. Okay, but you can actually, the other thing you can do is you can come in here and do a file save you can export it okay and if you wanted to you can actually save it to a Visio XML format if you want to give it to somebody who's running Visio but there's a whole lot of things you can do with this on the flowchart side now you also have the ability to do um, some other sheets okay like just um, geographic shapes um, you can do room design and other stuff like that. You can do maps, you can do ladders. So just um, one of the other things you can do is I'll just put a sorted, okay? It gives you all of your shapes here. So I know part of your project is to design, do a room design. You can come out here with your rectangular, okay? You can start your room if you wanted to, okay? Then what I would do is I would send that. I basically will take um, object and that one I'm going to send to the back. Then I can start drawing like my tables and stuff like in here. Um, I want to have a box. Okay, so I'll bring a box out here if you want to do a table. Okay, sometimes that. This square down here under assorted is perfect square, perfect height, and stuff like that. Doesn't do too well for tables. Um, you could draw in machinery and stuff like that. So you have a lot of things you can do with this from a floor plan as well. Don't forget about your text editing, your text area there. Okay, you can put text labels inside of everything. So... Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you're doing with Dia. It's awesome software, just it takes a little bit of time to get used to. Um, but if you have any problems, reach out and let me know.